my name is Laetitia Miral. I'm a paper magician and in this video I'm going to share with you tips and advices if you want to start a hunter fee in papier mâché. So there are many things you need to think of before starting. The first important thing to think of when you want to create your first hunter fee, whatever the technique, the medium you are using, it is the neck. You are not creating an entire character, you are creating a head and the neck, this is what the hunter fee is. And the neck is pretty critical because it will allow you to create very large antlers, very large horns, spectacular ears, and you will not be confined by the position of the head. Because in this example, for example, it is a, uh, an old uh, trophy I made quite some time ago and it's, I do things a bit bigger now, but you can tell already because I have a bit of space here, I will have the possibility to create big antlers which are always uh, on the back, at the back of the head actually. The antlers of a deer, a reindeer, they always have the antlers pretty much at the, at the back of the head. So if you don't have a nice good neck, you won't have the possibility to do that. So if you're doing a war deer, any other animal or an ibex, it might bother you a bit less, but otherwise this is one of the very good reasons to do one. And it will create something really more spectacular. You won't have the feeling that it is glued to the wall. It's going to be really spectacular to do it like that. So you need to think of the neck before thinking of the head, before thinking of anything else. So I've done a rabbit trophy and a big deer trophy. The deer trophy is the biggest one I have ever made. I've made a lot of deers, a lot of trophies th throughout the years, especially when I was working with galleries and shops. And I loved hunt trophies, so I made quite a lot. And I didn't always do this very long big neck because I didn't think of that very much. When you really pay attention to that, you can totally see the difference and how more spectacular it is. Why doing a hunter fee in papier mâché, for example, by using this technique? The first thing is, of course, you won't have a corpse on your wall, you will have a paper animal. It's not going to be this creepy thing with a lot of chemicals inside. It's going to be totally healthy, totally eco-friendly, all that, and it's going to be really spectacular and you can make it the size you want. It can be extremely huge and large and there is no limit, really. Papier mâché will also allow you to have something pretty light, though if you do something pretty big, it's not going to be so light, but compared to other techniques, it might still be very, very light. I don't like to use chicken wire. It's something that some artists will use easily when they want to create something pretty big. I don't like chicken wire at all. I never use it. Um, I think you can totally do things without using that, even at a very, very big scale. The only thing is you need to include more drying times. You need to work a bit differently to reach the same scale, the same size, but it can totally work and it's less hurtful for the hands. So the real papier mâché, classical papier mâché technique is just perfect for that. A lot of newspaper, wallpaper based, nothing really crazy or fancy. It's most of the thing you can find around your home uh, uh, in your town or you can even order online for really not a lot and it's going to allow you to do something pretty spectacular that all your visitors will notice. Thick wallpaper paste, that's the only other thing. I know depending on the country you are from, sometimes it's already all prepared when you buy it. Well, here in France and in Europe, most of European countries, you can have it in flakes or in sort of powder and you can really decide the thickness you want. So it's pretty nice too for that because when you work on a very big scale, it's nice to have something super thick so that it's going to dry a bit faster. When you work on a big scale, the thing which is important to understand is you're going to create pretty much a trophy upside down. You will have the base on your desk or on your table and it's not always easy to understand where the head should be because you have to imagine that later it's going to be like that but at the beginning he's like that and it's not always easy to imagine where the antlers will be the, especially the bigger the larger you go for a rabbit as well it's even more complicated because his head is in different positions so that's something you have to think of and check on a regular basis on your wall how it looks like so that you have an idea of how it's going to be on your wall. If you want him to be very high, very low on your wall, it will have an impact on the position of the head. So you, you don't necessarily want your rabbit to be all facing you from above. Maybe you would like him to face the wall uh, in front of him. So 
that's something you absolutely need to check on a regular basis while you are sculpting the head that the head is well aligned and is well facing you it's not too low not too high another mistake you need to avoid is when you are building something very big very large is to make your trophy go sideways because you are building a big neck so it's not always easy to make it super straight the ears super aligned really aligns everything aligned even if you are nothing is really symmetrical in the real world you don't want to have the neck going sideways unless it's totally um, on purpose you wanted this result but otherwise it's quite nice to check on a regular basis that you are not building the head on the left or on the right and that everything is pretty straight so for the antlers the horns anything like that i like to add them afterwards i will never sculpt them at the same time it's pretty difficult to sculpt everything at once but all my ears all my rabbit hairs donkeys they will be sculpted at once because i don't use wire for those but for the antlers the horns i like to sculpt them a bit separately at the beginning then I will adjust everything together. So this is the way I like to do things. I suppose there are so many ways to do uh, the antlers, uh, the ears antlers in so many different ways, but I would suggest it's quite easy to do it this way. If you are interested now to start your first papier mache big giant spectacular hunt trophy, and you would like to be guided and helped, I have a fairy tale hunt trophy workshop coming. So I have actually two. You can join the D-Hunt Trophy only if you're not interested in the full thing or you can join the Hunt Trophy, the D-Hunt Trophy, Rabbit Hunt Trophy, Canopy, Bad Canopy and also the Unicorn. So it is a big home fairy tale deco workshop for decor you can hang on your wall. It's only things we can hang on the wall actually. So you will have the possibility to join this big giant adventure or only the D-Hunt Trophy workshop all the informations are just linked below. You can find them. If you are watching this way in the future, the links will still work, so you can still click on them and see if you are interested in that. All the information, the links are just under the video and you can click on them if you want to know more. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.